Happy Saturday, everybody. I hope everybody had a great Friday evening. For those of you that uh, uh, did what we did and went to bed early and got some good sleep, I hope you uh, feel awesome. And for those of you that decided to go out drinking last night and partying and treating your body like shit, was it your birthday? What the fuck? No, I'm just joking. I hope you had a good time, too. I hope you feel fine. Uh, my name is Alan Roberts, for those of you that are new here. Um, uh, and today, we are going to talk about how fat people... Uh, in our society today are pretty mentally ill and how we are not helping them at all by denying their mental illness and or uh, certain aspects that would cause them to have catalyst to change. Uh, we're going to discuss at length Miss Mary Fran from TikTok. Um, but first, I wanted to just preface a few things. Like I, I wanted to set a few things up so people can see like just how insane we've gotten as a society uh, because it's truly like, I am just beside myself with some of this stuff anymore. I don't get it. Like I, I, I don't understand how we uh, have accepted this type of extremely unhealthy behaviors and thought processes. The concept that we should not say something to a fat person because it might hurt their feelings is so selfish, so uh, inherently dangerous for society and that person. I don't understand. Like if you're just, if, if you don't have any societal repercussions for unhealthy actions, it could lead you to very, very, very unhealthy states of being. So if we, as an example, say you know a friend and he is an intravenous drug user. He's a heroin addict, right? And you just kind of say, you're fine, buddy. Just the same way you are. Track marks look great. No problem, you know? Uh, in fact, I think the track marks look better on your arm than, regular, than your regular arms. When you tell this person there's nothing wrong with them, one, you are lying. You are a very, very serious liar. You're a horrible person about lying about something like that. And two, you're hurting that person and therefore society also. There's very little difference between saying to a drug user or an alcoholic that there's not a problem with their unhealthy self-harming behaviors and trying to pretend that a fat person is not gluttoning themselves, making excuses for them, making it like softening the blow of emotional hurt from societal repercussions does not help the person soften the blow of their actual physical health problems. So I just wish people could get there because I think that, you know, we just live in such, I mean, most people in society are just flat out pussies. Most people out there do not want to say the, the things that they think will make them appear to be not a nice person because for some reason, we have a society that gives so much of a shit about being considered a nice person. You know, I don't, I don't want to try to be a nice person. I want to be a good person. There's a huge difference. Trying to be a nice person does not mean you're a good person. Having the appearance of niceness. I think Elon Musk really recently said something uh, about this recently. You know, people trying to present themselves as doing good while doing evil because it's evil. It's just flat out evil. Um, I just want to, we're going to watch a video. This is not Mary Fran's video. We're, I have a few videos I wanted to go over, but I wanted to get started today. Uh, for those of you that are looking for any of my coaching, uh, any of my, my wife and I's coaching, get on, on our app uh, or any supplements, you can follow the link on my link tree right there. Also, you can follow that to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, uh, or excuse me, Instagram and um, uh, X. Uh, and I am on X all the time, pretty much. I, I, that's where I go to fucking just vent. So uh, I love it there because I'm allowed to vent and without getting kicked off, <clears throat> at least for right now. But we'll see. But I, I don't know if any, everybody's seen oh. this one. But this woman, I think this is a, a, an excerpt from my 600-pound life. But we're just going to view a few things here, and I want to talk about this. First of all, she looks about five, 600 pounds. OK, uh, and she's trying to fit into a car. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe they're trying to buy the car. I don't know. Oh, look, I mean, she obviously th this is uh, in her legs. You can look down. 
That is, I, uh, that is either lipedema or lymphedema. I would imagine it's lymphedema because it's also in our upper thighs and stuff like that, and you, you, you can see it through. Lymphedema is almost always caused by being already super fat. That's reality also. Softening the blow on that, lying that, oh, well, she's got a reason. She's got lymphedema. That you're, you have lymphedema because you're fat. A lot of people don't understand, too, that PCOS, like very serious PCOS symptoms, are exacerbated by being in a constant inflammatory state from being morbidly obese. That's another thing too. Obesity exacerbates almost all of these things. If you have PCOS, lymphedema, lipedema, um, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, if you have any of these conditions, that is more of a reason for you to take your health extremely seriously. It is, it is a bodily dysfunction already. You should be taking it very, very, very seriously instead of using it as an excuse to glutton yourself. And I know people will be like, well, you have no idea what she eats. This woman eats a fuck ton. A, like, I, believe, I believe the scientific term is a metric fuck ton of food a day. And uh, she's trying to get to a car. First of all, the shock absorbers, watch, watch the car. Are you gonna fit? Oh, oh, Christian. No, I can't get up. She can't get up. She's not even sitting on the ground. She can't get up. Okay, hold on. Don't stress. You know, yesterday I talked about. Uh, yesterday I talked about the uh, uh, sit down to stand up test. Like, if you can't can't sit down on the ground and stand back up without the use of your hands, you should video yourself doing it. But if you, you can't do it without the use of your hands, you should. I mean, you have work to do. But if you if it takes you an inordinate amount of time just to sit yourself down, lay flat on the ground sit yourself back up and stand back up, even using your hands. I mean, very realistically, you, you're in trouble. Like, if you're not elderly, what is your excuse? If you aren't elderly, even, even for most elderly people, shit, for, for elderly people, it, this is why you keep moving, you know? We're saying you can do a freak I'm out. scared. I'm scared. Don't Please. be scared. Please. Come on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Help me. That helped me right there. I'm just letting you know. The tone of that helped me right there. She would have sat there a long motherfucking time if that was me. Uh, I, and if people didn't think that that's mean. This, I feel bad, like the dude here that's connected to her, I don't know if that's her husband, her brother, I don't know, I, don't, I have no idea, but he's abused. He, one, he's enabling her. It's a very, it's a very mutually abusive relationship. She would have spouted that, help me with that tone, and she would have sat there a long ass fucking time. I've been like, help your fucking self. Just, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Hang on. How, that, this, this is patheticness. I can't. I have to go down. I can't. <laughs> Let go. Oh, I mean, my God. Oh. Did you hear that? Listen to this shit. Let go. Okay. I would have been in the car driving away. To speak to me like that, I would have been in the car driving the fuck away. You know why? Because that's what's best for her and that dude. The fucking attitude, the childish ass fucking behavior. You know, and I understand she's fat, so therefore, and I, this upsets the shit out of people, but it's realistic. She's super morbidly obese, so she, her, her brain is likely not functioning in the proper way. Her, her mental maturity is stunted because she looks like she's been fat the entirety of her fucking life. Um, she's not like uh, her cognition skills are low, her executive function of the brain, her self-awareness, those sorts of things. Very, very, very low, you know, but you, you would have been sitting there a long fucking time, a long time. I might have I might have come back, but I would have gone, maybe got myself a coffee, fucking drove around came back and if your ass was still fucking laying there, you know, maybe I might like encourage you, come on, you can get up. But I would have not fucking not touched you again to help you get up. What are you going to do now? Oh, my 
leg got stuck. Your leg, yeah, it, it, that's the problem. Your leg got stuck. That's the problem. Your leg got stuck. Now, you, the problem is that you didn't take the societal cues that are built into our society to help you avoid this shit. This is what I'm talking about. And I want everybody to understand real, real, real clearly what I'm saying this. But we're going to listen to uh, we'll listen to the rest of this real quick. This is everything I feared. If I can't get up, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my leg got stuck. Yeah, that's the problem, your leg. How am I going to get up? I, uh, a forklift? I don't know. Use the car. I'm so scared right now, but I don't want to have to call for help and have to get the fire department here. If you're so big, that you, like, so obviously this has been a thing before where you've fallen down and you've had to call the fucking fire department. Somebody tell me how being obese isn't everybody's problem. When you're that fat, you are a societal burden. Like, for, and, dude, and she's going to hurt that dude. I mean, she's like that dude trying to pick her up, bro. He don't, he don't, he's not Eddie Hall. You know, he, he, he's, he's not, he's not uh, Thor Magnuson. You know, he's not Brian Shaw. Dude shouldn't be trying to pick her up. I mean, and I'm not, I'm being as serious as possible. And even those dudes would probably be like, I don't know, that's a lot of dead weight. Because that's the problem. It's dead ass weight. Picking up a human being is a lot harder than picking up, picking up a bar. Here's the problem. She missed a ton of societal cues that should have told her to get her shit together. And we as a society have allowed that to happen. The very second you can't fit into a booth, it's not at a restaurant. It's not the booth's fault. It's not the restaurant's fault. You're too fucking fat. When you have to look at a chair and worry if it can support your weight when it supports you know, a healthy person's weight because you're not healthy because you're fat. But if it can support a healthy person's weight, if you have to think about that, you are missing a cue. It is not the chair's fault. It's not the people that have purchased the chair. It's not the people that have, you know, decided that, you know, uh, here's the chairs we're going to have in our fucking house or in, in our uh, in our business. It's your fault. And you should take that as a cue, like, holy shit, I'm so big, I have to worry about whether a chair is going to collapse when I fucking sit on it? If you have to worry about fitting through a doorway, if you can't buy clothes, all of these things, all of these things are societal cues for you to unfuck yourself. But in our society right now, we are not doing that. In our society right now, we are applauding these people on along. No, you go, boo. Yeah, you, 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 you slay, queen. You know, you... you here, here is a circus fucking tent for you to wear as a dress. You go do you. Get on the runway. You're awesome. It's a societal cue. And societal cues are there for a reason because the actions are unhealthy, therefore bad for her and for society. All in that clip right there, we, we heard how she was afraid she was going to have to use resources, public societal resources, to get her ass off the fucking ground. Unreal, unfucking believable that it would be it would be to that case. Do you know that when these people fall down, like imagine her on an airplane. People say like there shouldn't be a, there shouldn't be a size limit on an airplane. Imagine her on a fucking airplane. When, imagine imagine her like uh, you're riding public transit, and there's an accident. Imagine if she's just by herself in an accident. It endangers every single fucking person that's got to try to fucking help her more than what would be if she was thin. If she if she was a normal fucking weight, if she was a human weight, I'm just going to start calling it that. If she was a human weight, she would absolutely be easier to rescue. But instead, it takes more resources and it endangers the people that are trying to rescue her to a greater degree, they're already risking their lives to try to rescue people. Firemen, police officers are already risking their lives to try to rescue people. And you are endangering them even more by being fat as fuck. Reality exists. It's a societal cue that we should not accept. When you go to the, when this woman goes to the hospital, it's going to take eight fucking people to flip her in bed so she doesn't get bed sores and die of infection. 
you realize that? Eight fucking people. We wonder why healthcare, well, healthcare is expensive because the fucking healthcare industry is greedy as fuck, and I've outlined that many times. But in reality, she takes way more hospital resources when she wouldn't if she was not inhuman sized. Oh, you're dehumanizing them. She dehumanized her fucking self eating the fucking 600 pounds. That's not human. That's not a human size. It's not dehumanization when you are not of a human size. Sorry if that hurt your fucking fifis. Life sucks by a helmet. It would take eight orderlies to flip her in bed. Eight. And everybody's like, oh, no, you can't tell if somebody's healthy by their size. <laughs> you don't want to bet. Really? I, anytime anybody says that, I show them this, and they're like, oh, well, come on, you're using an extreme. Where does the cutoff line go? Where does the cutoff line go? Right now, we're about to take a look at Mary Fran, and this is Mary Fran from TikTok. She's massively beloved on TikTok because she is the best fucking victim claimer and best fucking bullshitter I've fucking seen. This woman screams victim all the fucking time, tries to get her audience to fucking go after people. And by the way, Mary Fran, if you see this and you want to bring your audience after me, come and get it. Because if I, this is, just so you know, what's about to happen is me being nice. This message is for me, from me. So if It's for her, from her. If you're not me, keep scrolling. So everybody should keep scrolling. Like as if she's not trying to pander. And not only that, but like, I mean, for those of you that are holding your, that are watching this on your phone, you might want to pull your phone a little farther away because she in, has to inhale so hard between breaths and where you're going to get sucked into your fucking screen. Okay, ready? You have a belly. No shit. Hello? And actually, actually, no, you don't. No, you don't. That is a massive, massive, massive gut. It's not a belly. A belly is a cute little thing that pregnant women get. She's got a little bit of a belly. No, you have got an enormous fucking gut that hangs over because you've abused your body for fucking decades. This woman's 30. 30. This is a young old lady. This is a young old lady. Your belly shouldn't touch your thighs. It has, it, if it touches your thighs, it's not a belly. It's an apron. It's there. She's not going anywhere. Why isn't she going anywhere? Because you refuse to change. Because the societal cues that are making you feel all hurt in, in your in your fucking fifis, you're going to ignore those because you feel you should not have to actually, you know, try in life, apparently. Like, just for reference, this is a middle school teacher. This person is teaching young minds. We wonder why the fucking generations are fucked up. This right here, this right here, this is who you have to look up to. This, this is who your children are being taught by. This is who your children are being taught by, like the basic skills of fucking life in middle school. So I'm going to need you to just like get over it. No, you should not just get over it. If you just get over it, you're going to end up on the fucking ground, not able to fit into a car, thinking if you have to have to call the fire fucking department. That's the fucking problem. The problem is when people just want to get over it, um, you are hurting yourself and you're hurting society. This woman already, 300 and some odd pounds, easy, fucking easy, probably four, depending on how tall she is. And realistically, if she were to get injured or she need, would need, need medical attention, it would take multiple fucking people multiple, multiple, multiple fucking people to fucking help her. And they would all be risking their own health by having to lift her fucking fat ass. This is the problem. This childish ass behavior where the fat isn't the problem. The gluttony that leads to the fat isn't the problem. It is the fucking problem. Absolutely. You are in fact the problem. It is not fat phobia. It is not how society is so hard on fat people. Gravity and reality are hard on fat people because you are inhuman sized. 
You've eaten yourself out of human size. You've eaten yourself to deformity. Reality exists. It's your fault. It is your fault, Mary Fran, and anybody else that wants to just get over having a huge ass fucking meat apron that hangs down and touches your fucking thighs. It's not a belly. It's a belly. She tries to talk in such cute language because she tries to act like she's a fucking 13 year old, even though she's fucking teaching 13 year olds. You know what I mean? Cause you know what? You look cute. No, you do not. It is not cute. Nothing about this is cute. The delusion that you do not look like you are physically fucking ill, that's not cute. The massive amount of what we know you are just gorging yourself in every day, you're gorging your fucking self every single day, not cute. The fact that you can barely fucking breathe standing there and talking, not fucking cute. The fact that you're trying to be in complete denial about your fucking station in life when it comes to your fucking health, not goddamn cute at all. The fact that you are trying to just get over something that is massively damaging to you and all of society, not fucking cute at all. You look cute, and your belly does not change that. In fact, I think it adds a little bit of pizzazz. So now it's gone from she's trying to get over the meat apron that is hanging from her fucking front. Uh, she's trying to get over it to the fact that she thinks it's a good thing. That's mentally ill. That right there is mental illness. She's mentally fucking ill. Th th to believe the uh, product of her self-harming behaviors is a good thing. It adds a little pizzazz. Fucking real. That's like saying, that's like eating yourself to diabetes and having your foot chopped off is positive. What's the difference? Oh, you look better without that foot. So listen. She almost just passed out. That's a little bit of pizzazz. So listen. Li listen. You have a belly, and that's okay. No, it's not. It's absolutely not okay. And it's not a belly. It is a huge, 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 huge. Yeah, it's a fat apron. Somebody just corrected me. It, it, it's a fat apron. It's not okay. You're hurting yourself. And you're in denial of it. You, th this is mental illness. We shouldn't coddle this. Coddling her by saying, by her, like, people in the comments section of this video are like, you're right, you look great, you're so pretty, blah, blah, blah. Why fucking lie to this woman? She looks like she's going to die. She looks like she's about to pass the fuck out right now. Why lie to her? I mean, listen to her breathe and you are telling her she's okay. Listen to her breathe and you are telling her that there's nothing wrong with this. Look at the redness around her face from standing and talking. Because your body is great the way that it is. It's horrible the way it is. Your body is horrible the way it is. You are obviously in very serious uh, hormonal imbalance. Uh, thus the five o'clock shadow and normal chest double that she shows when she wears, wears something that shows cleavage. She is enormous. She carries almost all of her weight in her fucking midsection, which means she is gorging herself on ultra processed foods to a great degree. It is not cute. It is not good. It is not gorgeous. It is not positive. It is not glamorous. It is bad for you. It is bad for society. You are in fact a burden upon the rest of society and us pushing along your mental illness and e not calling people that are not only is it it's bad to not it's it's horrible to fucking uh propagate this to be like oh you're fine yeah you go oh great speech i needed to hear this too if you need to hear something like this from her you're mentally ill too bitches i mean i'm sorry i don't know what the fucking else to tell you you know like if you if you can resonate with this shit you got a fucking mental illness you got to get your shit together, too, because what the fuck? If this somehow spoke to you in a positive way, you're fucked up, too. But that's bad. It's still bad to not call her on this. You know why? Because the avoidance of societal cues enables her to all of a sudden mentally stream somehow that her fucking fatness is a positive, that it's cute, that it somehow adds something to her. 
It adds a lot to gravity, the gravitational pull you have. It adds a lot to our fucking healthcare burden. It adds a lot to the danger that you actually fucking enact when you are in public spaces that you might need rescued if there's a fucking incident or an accident. It adds to your burden upon yourself and your fucking, it adds to the rate that you are dying because we're all dying. Some of us just at a much faster rate and she's a fucking young old lady. 30 years old will luck be lucky to see 40. Lucky. Lucky, especially if she keeps up with this fucking ridiculousness that it's a good thing. It's that's mental illness. It's just straight up mental fucking illness. Stop being upset or worried that your belly is going to make people uncomfortable. You know, it makes you uncomfortable visibly. It makes it makes people uncomfortable because we know that you are hurting yourself. We know that you are gluttoning yourself. You are face fucking yourself with food every single day. Every fucking single day. We can hear you breathe. We can see you with our eyes. You are uncomfortable. You are radically, physically uncomfortable. You know who else is uncomfortable? Anybody that has to sit next to you on public transit. And that is a you problem. You created that problem through decades of gluttony. You not fitting into booths. You not fitting into chairs. She used to do this uh, traveling as a fucking fat person. She said she called it plus size, but you're not plus size when you're this big. You're just fucking multi-sized. You are fucking fat as fuck. She was bitching about the size of the towels and the size of this. Those are societal cues that instead of us, like everybody's like, oh my God, she's so right. The towels are too small. Oh my God, she's blah, blah, blah. No, people should be like, lose fucking weight then. Lose fucking weight because that's an actual problem. You are the actual problem. You are the problem. Your behaviors are the problem. It is not the size of the towels. It is not the size of the chairs. It is not the size of the doorways. It is not the size of the bathtub or the toilet or the car seats or the airplane seats or the hallways or the elevators. You are the fucking problem. You, you are the, you are the absolute problem. You are the one that has made it so you don't fit into what would be a healthy society because you are in fact super fucking unhealthy and you should be worried as fuck about it. You should play this video back to yourself and be like, holy shit, my breathing is fucking horrible. Holy shit, I look like I'm going to pass the fuck out. But no, because she's mentally ill and we are saying, go clean, go, slay queen, slay. You are just perfect the way you are. Those people that say that shit to her are horrible fucking people. Your audience hates the fuck out of you, Mary Fran. If your audience actually loved you, they would be like, look, you need to lose weight. If they actually loved you, they would be like, I know you want to be this all positive person, but you're clearly mentally ill and you need to lose fucking weight. And I'm sorry if you can't get with that, but anybody that tells you you're fine the way you are does not fucking like you. They like, they may be like seeming like they're nice in societal standards by saying that you, that you are fine and supporting you, but they do not fucking like you. They really do not. If you are, if you are this woman's size, if you are close to this woman's size, anybody that tells you you're fine, you don't need to lose weight, don't worry about it, they hate the fuck out of you. They may not think they do, but they do. They at least don't like you enough to tell you the fucking truth. And that is not love by any stretch of the fucking imagination. Makes you unco people uncomfortable. Weird vibes. Okay. Makes you unco people uncomfortable. Weird vibes. Stop being upset or worried that your belly is going to make people uncomfortable. You know what makes you unco people uncomfortable? Weird vibes. Yeah. So she just said weird vibes make people uncomfortable. I'm going to just let you all look at that for a second. She's the one that's telling people not to be weird. Soak it in. Soak it in. Pull it all in. Like, let it marinate in your brain for a second. You are not allowed to bring weird vibes into today. Got it? <laughs> You're not. She's talking to herself, supposedly. She's telling herself not to bring weird vibes in. Missed that train like a decade ago. You know, just saying. It's my only warning I'm going to give you. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay.
just not attainable. You know, it's just not healthy. I'm <laughs> sorry, it's just not. It's just not healthy. And again, we've missed so many societal cues. Like that is the problem. Like people have just literally missed a ton of what would be the cues for them to actually get healthy. And I just wish people could understand that it's, it is actually mean to not say something. It's, it's mean to not say something. I just don't, I don't, I don't ever profess to even be nice. I'm not a nice guy. I, I don't want to be a nice guy. I want to be a good man. And a good man will say the shit that people don't want to fucking hear. You're fat as fuck, Mary Fran. Your audience clearly fucking hates you. They clearly hate you. They may not think so, but you need to wrap your head around that anybody, anybody that is telling you you're fine the way you are, including yourself, is not acting in your best interest. Just 100%. Anybody this size, literally fucking... The... the <laughs> I just, I don't even understand what, where we're at because this next video we're going to watch is how in the not, like the, the amount of absolute fucking just privilege these people feel is just crazy. Listen to this woman. All I want is for authors to stop using fat phobic language to try to iterate the main character's distaste for an antagonistic character. That's all she wants. That, that's all she wants. Using fat phobic language to try to iterate the main character's distaste for an antagonistic character. I'm reading a book. Her mother is one of the antagonists. Notice the breathing. In the amount of times that she has referenced her 370 pound frame. 370 pounds for a woman is horrific. If you're, if you're a 370 pound woman, listen to this, I can help you. I want to help you, but you're just going to have to get over this bullshit. Like for real, like I, I want everyone to understand, like this is not a, I don't dislike the person. I actually like you more than other people that are fucking trying to pretend that you're okay. If you're a 370 pound person, not even woman, just person, what are you waiting for to do something about it? Like, I mean, what are you waiting for? Do something about it. You know it's bad. You're a 370 pound person. Death could be today. Death could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be five years from now. It could be 10 years from now but it's not going to be much longer than that because you're 370 pounds, 370 pounds. And I can guarantee you this, the longer that goes on at 370 pounds, the absolute worse your life is going to get. The more painful you like 370 pounds, you're in pain. You can't even look away at the camera and you're looking straight in my ugly ass fucking face right now. And you know, I'm telling you the truth. Even those of you that hate me, even those of you that hate me, that just hate watch me, because you like to have, you have to watch me because you hate me, you hate hearing what I say. That little thing that makes you watch me every day because you hate hearing what I say, that is the actual you trying to escape. That is the, the reason why people hate watch me is because they are trying deep down to save themselves. I believe this. I have dozens. It's probably 100 people by now that I have coached to health and literally have started off by saying, I used to fucking hate you. And then one day I heard your voice in my head as I had a hard time getting up a flight of stairs. Or one day I held my breath and I was tying my shoes and I heard your voice. Or one day I looked down and I couldn't see my penis and I realized I couldn't see it for the last 10 years and I heard your fucking voice. Those of you that are hate watching me out there, understand that I like you and I am way more positive for you than any person that's telling you you're fine. This ugly ass tattooed bald old motherfucker telling you that you in fact need to get your health together, get your shit together for the benefit of yourself, your family, society, and the planet. 
that I give more of a fuck about you than anybody that is sitting right next to you saying you're just fine just the way you are. And that's pretty sad because I don't know you, but I happen to care about you more than even your very best friend. If your very best friend is literally saying you're fine the way you are, that's true. And you know it. That's why you hate watch me. You watch this shit because you know, it's true. That's why people, when they, when they come at me, that's why people, when they come at me, they come at my appearance. They come at how I talk. They come at all those things. That's why they come at that because they can't come at the information I deliver. They can't come at the thought process. They can't come at the critical thinking that I use. They can't come for that because it's factual and it's not debatable. You can't actually argue that being fat is bad for you because gravity exists because guess what? Gravity fucking exists and it exists in the same realm and same dimension as the structural integrity of connective tissue, cartilage, and bone. Your weight and how much blood your, pump, your heart can pump in its ejection fraction, that absolutely is reality. It cannot be argued. And you know, as a 370, and you know, as a fat person in general, a 300 pound, 250 pound person, you know that your heart thumps its ass off when you try to do even the basic shit. That's why people cannot argue with what I say. That's why they attack who I am or what I look like or how I present myself. If that makes you okay, if you just keep staying here and keep arguing, keep fucking yelling, keep calling me bald. I love being bald. Keep saying all the shit because you know why? It keeps you here. And eventually, eventually, you will have the epiphany where you hear my voice in your head saying, what the fuck? I almost just passed out climbing a flight of stairs. That's pathetic. Holy shit. I fucking had to hold my breath to tie my shoes and I'm lightheaded standing up now. That's pathetic. I've been there. So I know it's pathetic. You, if you are there, you deep down know it's pathetic right fucking now, right now. Nobody, if they had the choice, nobody would choose to be morbidly obese. If, you, if, I, could, if I could literally just wave a magic wand and bing, fucking make it so you could go from 400 pounds to 160 pounds and lean, Nobody would not take you take me up on that. No 400 pound person would not take that offer. None. None. Hook any of them up to a fucking lie detector right goddamn now. Bring Lizzo, bring Tess Holiday, any of them. Them saying, I love myself the way I am is a cope. And it's a cope that society is allowing to happen because society is more interested in people's emotions, fifis, and the big companies that are, in fact, pushing this woke bullshit agenda, make money off you being fat as fuck. They make money off you consuming all the food and all the pharma. They make money from it. You are their cash cows, literally. You are the cows that they milk after they fatten up. You are the fattened cow that they then milk for everything that, they, that you fucking have. The analogy is factual. It's crazy. Whoops. Ron Polano. Hi, Anna. I haven't been on much recently, and I've been uh, abroad for the last year. How's it going to release a product, too? The recent product, too, is also known as Alchemy. Uh, it has been released, and you can get it right here. It is also part of the, no, uh, the, uh, the Holy Trinity Weight Loss Bundle, which is Alchemy, Ember, and No Morbidity. You can get it right here, my friend, right there. And thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. Uh, I did want to get to this real quick, too, before, before I move on. When I was in my 30s, I weighed almost 340 pounds down to 169 and still at it every day. That's what a fucking hero looks like in the 2020s. That is what a person who took personal responsibility looks like. This, this, people like this are who should be applauded and propped up in society. Not Tess Holiday, not Mary Fran, not anybody like that. These type of people. This is who should be used as an example of what a person who truly loves themselves looks like. This person. Congratulations, Melinda. You are fucking awesome. Rock the fuck on. No shit. Oops. So we're going to get back to the book lady. 
I'm reading a book. Her mother is one of the antagonists. And the amount of times that she has referenced her 370 pound frame, her inability to sit in a chair comfortably. It's a real thing in society. And how in old photos, she was actually small enough for her dad to wrap both of her arms around her. These are, it's all, if you have gluttoned yourself to 370 pounds, it shouldn't be seen as a positive. It should always be seen as a negative. It should be seen as an open, disgust negative because it is in fact super ass negative for the person, their family, society, the planet. It's horrible. It is objectively bad in every fucking way to be morbidly obese for you, for the people around you, for society, for the planet. It is objectively bad. It should be seen that way. We should not coddle this. We should not accommodate. We should in fact ask those people to accommodate their fucking gluttony. We shouldn't be having bigger chairs. We should be telling them if you want to fit in this chair, eat less, move more, get your shit straight. Talk to a doctor. If you need to get on no morbidity, get on alchemy, do whatever you need. And I guess I'm pumping my own shit because my products have helped people lose hundreds of fucking pounds already. Hundreds in the state of satiation, satisfaction, working on their hydration, building healthier habits. We at the Ambrosia Collective, we are healthcare. We are trying to fucking help you lose the fucking weight because being morbidly obese is objectively bad for you in every fucking way. And it's bad for the people around you. It's bad for your families. If you have children, if you have a child and you weigh 350 fucking pounds, fix your shit. I don't give a fuck how much you like pizza. I don't give a fuck how much you like ice cream. I don't give a fuck how much you like fucking McDonald's or fast food. I don't give a fuck if you're addicted to this shit because I know you are because I've been there. I understand this, but fix your fucking shit. You're a parent and you are dooming your child to have the same nasty ass, horrible fucking behaviors you have unless you fix your fucking self. And you can't look in the mirror and say you love being 350 pounds, that you love barely able to get out of the bed in the morning, that you fucking love barely fucking being able to move and not being able to sit your ass on the fucking ground and play with your kids. You can't actually say this shit. So you should fix your fucking self. If you can't fit into a fucking chair, that's a you problem. You should fix that shit. It should be the societal cue for you to fix that shit. This is awesome. My husband went from 210 to 194 in two weeks with alchemy. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Being fat does not make you inherently bad and using for you, it does. It makes you inherently bad for yourself. It certainly does. It makes you inherently bad for society. It certainly does. It makes you factually more burdensome upon society. That's bad. It absolutely does. I'll say it. I don't, I, I don't, I don't give a fuck how much people get pissed off. Being fat's bad for you. Being fat's bad for the planet. It's bad for society. It's bad for everybody. It's bad for everybody around you. It is bad. It inherently makes at least your actions towards yourself and others bad and privileged. You treat yourself poorly. And in fact, you fucking know it. And then in a privileged way, you try to deny it and ask society to fucking, you know, bullshit around it. Descriptors as fat should not lead the audience to also agree that that person is bad those of us who are fat just want to exist in our bodies and be left alone that's it then don't fucking make fucking bullshit stuff like this what the fuck are you doing but i mean if you want to be left alone like now we're interacting if you want to be left alone don't fucking do this shit this isn't you want to be left alone. This is want you to be. This is you wanting people to change about this shit. Read different books for fuck's sake. And the last one we're going to. Gosh, it does not matter how much you weigh. It matters. How yes, it does. How much you eat. And how it doesn't matter how much you weigh. It matters how much you eat. How well you eat in order to be healthy. And it's also genetic. So you fat phobics, you listen up right here. I used to weigh over 300 pounds, okay? I don't anymore. I lost a considerable amount of weight. 
By changing your diet, right? About three to five times a week. The way I lost the week, weight was on keto and exercise. So by changing what you eat and fucking, yeah. I have maintained this size and this weight for over two years now and eat pretty normal, not overdo it. Um, I have smaller portion sizes, but I did add sugar back into my diet. So unhealthy. And when I say sugar, I mean white flours, rice, potatoes, and sweets. I have a sweet tooth. In other words, you're addicted to sugar. So pretty much candy and chocolate I love. I don't eat too much of it, but I do eat it. And of course, I went she just to said it. She just said I don't eat too much of it. My blood work done. And guess what? I'm pre-diabetic. That means you're eating too much sugar, you dumb fuck. If, if, if you are developing diabetes, you are eating too much fucking sugar. And she'll admit this. And my cholesterol is the highest point it can possibly be before it's bad. And all of this while maintaining a pretty healthy diet. No, it's not. Or you would not be pre-diabetic. ...of sugar and working out three to five times a week. With the exception of sugar. So if you're not, you don't have a healthy diet. So please stop looking at people's eyes, making assumptions about their health. No, and it's not an assumption. Because it's absolutely not true. Now what will yes, I Yes, it is. You just, you just prove it is. I'm going to fix those things. I will be taking most sugars out of my diet. And because you, it, it's not eating well. Because you know, like you know taking it out of your diet will be healthier for you. But you said you eat healthy. Probably eating sugar. This is what I mean. People are crazy. It's not a keto diet. Except that I will continue to eat fruit because it is good for you. No yes, fruit's fine. Uh, but added sugar, it's like, we, oh my God. See, this is what I'm talking about. This woman's fucking crazy. They're all just fucking delusional. Fucking crazy shit. I mean, I just don't even understand. <clears throat> I don't get it. I don't get it. I'll do a quick Q&A for anybody that wants to ask a question. I did want to also say, if you want to join our app, Crystal is getting ready to do a couch. Get, Crystal is getting ready to do a five. Uh, excuse me. A uh, Crystal is getting ready to do a virtual 5K. Couldn't seem to get the fucking word, words out. So if you even just join the app right now, the Black Friday deal uh, app and book sale. Uh, you get both our books. You get to ask somebody to join. You get to add somebody. You get to gift it, the app and both books to somebody else. And you both get to do the live and pre-recorded classes. And it also includes the Couch to 5K that's about to happen here very shortly. Um, and there is also three months and six months worth of coaching, one year worth of coaching. Um, I quit sugar cold turkey when I was 38. I'm now 44. My joint pain and sluggishness ended when I stopped eating sugar. I got off six meds just with that change alone. It's absolutely, absolutely. Uh, off topic, which branch of the military did you join, Alan? I recently accepted to join the Navy. I was in the Marine Corps a long, long, long time ago for uh, three and a half years. Um, I don't even remember anymore, and I honestly did not enjoy my time that much. I, I'm always just very clear. I, I'm, I'm not a live this way type person. I'm a go. The ADHD did not make I, That's when my ADHD was still a little out of control. It did not go well. I, I, it went well, but I just did not like it. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed traveling. I got to do a med pack on the Eisenhower. It was great. But anyway, but I don't, I don't even, I don't even do the, I'm a vet thing. Cause I was not in that long. So, I mean, I've, I will say that like, Hey, I was able to join the military when I was 17 years old. So why can't people be accountable for their actions now? But you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm still at a place where I was, uh, where I went the ultra process junk, but now I know how it makes me feel. And I make a choice. Most of the time, it's not worth it working to get to not wanting it. That's the key. That's one of the reasons why I think that everybody should like when you eat something, you should take an assessment. Like two hours after you eat anything, you should take an assessment. How does that make me feel? How does you know? How does my body actually feel with it? So, uh, let's see. Yep, yep, yep. I treat oh, oh. I treat sugar like how some religions avoid pigs. Most people should. Uh, most people should. Alan, uh, stop looking at fire and assuming it's hot. It, it's hot. You're just uh, anti -thermo thermodynamic phobic. <laughs> Funny. Uh, I must honestly say that the criticisms of Ted Holliday, especially compared to her car, had crossed the line at the bullying. I have to say, I don't give a fuck what you think, you pussy ass bitch. Um, she wants to put it out there, I'll put it back out there. It crossed the line into bullying. Oh, 
You mean because the fact that she locked her doors when uh, when she sees white men approach as if they have a fucking forklift to haul her ass the fuck out of it? Bullying. You people don't want to fucking see what it like. Like you guys don't want to know what I would do and say if I actually wanted to fucking bully somebody. Shut the fuck up, you pussy ass hoe. Ultra processed food is never worth it. Every time I think I could have some, I think about it, how it makes me feel afterwards. That's the way to go about it, for real. Uh, telling Tess Holiday she's healthy, she's healthy in every size is bullying. Exactly. It, trying to pretend like she is not, like, literally the picture of ill health, that's bullying. Trying to pretend she's okay, that's bullying. A forklift, for real. For real. I mean, it's like she's huge. Huge, huge. Uh, I brought Pringles the other day after several weeks of cooking from scratch and no uh, and no junk. I could feel my heart pounding. Had a massive energy crash later today. I'm all puffy. Not worth it. Hell yeah. That's actually a very positive thing to, to realize that. So uh, no one can bully Tess more than she bullied herself, disrespecting her body with food. That's, my, that's what I'm saying, Bettina. That's what I'm saying. Um, Alan is my hero. Sorry, Van Morrison. You are second. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Last questions, guys. I made a mistake this past Monday, ate uh, a son of a uh, son of baconator and took three days to digest it. Ugh. This is the size of a smart car. Valid. Valid, valid. All right. Any last questions, guys, before we get going? And one more time, here's where you can get the books and the coaching. Please do join. I hope to see you all there. And if not, I am going to go get Crystal set up for her 5K. I hope everybody has a phenomenal day. I'll be back tomorrow at some point in time, I think in the morning, probably, maybe. I don't know. We might be out and about. But I, I might be back tomorrow. I'll just suggest say that. I'll definitely be back Monday. So I hope. Oh, what's the name? What's the name of your app on Android? That's not how you join the app. It's because it's a it's on Trainerize, but it's it's called Damn Collective. You can join it by clicking the Black Friday deals thing I got right here. That can have you join the app. But it's also called the Damn Collective. Right here. Comparing a person to a car is just not in a, is, is not just inappropriate. It's dehumanizing and acceptable. Dehumanizing is just eating yourself to 400 fucking pounds, and I find it perfectly acceptable, and you can't do a fuck thing about it. So, I mean, you literally can't do anything about it. I can say whatever the fuck I want. You can't do nothing about it. So, just saying. So, um, you know, like, I mean, uh, it's dehumanizing. She dehumanized herself by gluttoning herself to 400 some fucking pounds, bro. I mean, that's patheticness. That's fucking sadness. And then to be in denial of it? Come on now. Come on now. That's dehumanizing. Eating like, like eating yourself to deformity. That's dehumanizing. You know, that's that's she they she dehumanized herself. And she is in fact the size of a small car. I mean, reality exists, whether you like it or not, whether it hurts your little fifis or not. So I hope everybody has a great day. I'll talk to everybody soon. God damn.